Everyone wants to live on top of the mountain, but all of the happiness and growth occurs while you're climbing it. Andy Rooney, famous for 60 Minutes, said that, and we are here to throw you a line to help you get where you want to go and remind you that you're not alone in your journey. I'm Doug Kaufman with Shop Owner Magazine. Welcome to SOS Shop Owner Solutions. We're exploring some of the nightmares that today's shop owners face, and we're going to talk about those 3 a.m. panics, the things that either wake you up or keep you up all night long in the first place. This episode of Shop Owner Solutions is brought to you by Auto Shop Solutions, the automotive marketing agency. You know how to fix cars in your shop. Auto Shop Solutions knows how to get them there. Auto Shop Solutions award-winning websites and automotive marketing services drive automotive businesses forward. From search engine optimization and social media to targeted paid search campaigns, Auto Shop Solutions knows how to get the auto shops more business. Visit autoshopsolutions.com slash podcast to learn more. And mention this podcast and you'll receive 50% off your setup fee. With us today is Dwayne Myers from Dynamic Automotive in Frederick County, Maryland, and Margaret Blango from Auto Shop Solutions. Also with me is my co-host, Vic Tarasic from Shop Owner Coach. Vic, goals obviously are a vital thing to have for today's shop. How can you reach them? Let's well, start out with knowing where you want to go. So marketing, in the marketing, is one thing a shop owner needs to be an expert at, right? One more thing. <laughs> One more thing. <laughs> One more thing. They need to be an expert at business, finance, personnel. You go on the list of things. So here's what a shop owner needs to do first. Who's their prime customer? What do they look like? Who is the customer you want to serve? What are the vehicles you want to bring in? Where do you want to go? Who do you want to bring alongside you to help you with your marketing? that can help you with tools in your tool belt from a marketing standpoint. So you don't have to be the expert. You just need to know the who, not how marketing is done. So we've got two experts with us today, Dwayne Myers and Margaret Polango, who are gonna give us a great example of a marketing partnership and how Dwayne with five stores in Frederick, Maryland, about to celebrate his 25th year, almost 50 employees, how he grew with assistance from a good marketing partner. So guys, thanks for being here. What I'd thanks like for to having do, us. Yeah. Yes, thanks what for having us on. Right, what I'd like you to do right out of the gate is share with the audience how you guys met Dwayne, what did you see in Auto Shop Solutions and what benefit did it do for you and your team? Sure. I actually didn't meet Margaret right away. I, I Auto Mechanica 2015. Uh, I went to a class that Danny Sanchez put on and it, it was a, about websites and marketing and SEO and definitely was a Above my head, <laughs> quite quite a bit. I thought I knew a little bit. I realized I didn't know anything because what I knew was already outdated as soon as I thought I realized what it was. So went to a class and actually Tony, who uh, is still with him, I believe head of sales, uh, he was new at the time. And, and at the end of the class, they told us, you know, well, let us look at your website and we'll tell you how bad it is. You can quite say it that way, but that that's what it should have been, how it should have been labeled. Uh, we had a local guy do our website, and uh, it was bad. And we were at three locations at that time, and uh, I, I gave it to Tony, and Tony went through the process. They look at it and give you a rating, and it, it rated pretty poorly. If I was in school, I would not have passed that year and went to the next grade. Uh, it, it, it rated bad, and, and he, he labeled it, and he'll smile when he hears this. He said it was a hodgepodge. It was a bunch of stuff thrown together, and it, uh, it, it made no sense. And uh, and that started us off, you know. From there, uh, Tony put together uh, a proposal on on what was best for us because they wanted to know what do you need. And at the time, it was pretty simple for us. It wasn't about growing locations at that point. It was about growing the locations we had. Um, 
We had our original store, which was doing really well. It was just a two-bay store. Our second location, and any shop owner knows, second location is always the hardest. Uh, that one still struggled. It needed more customers. Uh, and then a third, uh, we built Urbana, and it hadn't it had been open for a little while then, but it had never truly reached its uh, its level of success that it could. Uh, so we wanted to focus on uh, growing our customer base and not just customers, but the right customers, because we felt that we provided a premium service. So not that we needed premium customers, but we needed the ones that understood the value that we were giving them. So I want to touch on what you said, hodgepodge. <laughs> That describes my <laughs> websites <laughs> when I when I first got going, and I've seen a lot of hodgepodge websites from auto shops. Isn't HTML really easy to program, and that's why we end up with the websites that we have, <laughs> hodgepodge. And my question for you might be: Is why do you think many, not most, but many shop owners had a hodgepodge website? we have a habit of trying to do everything, you know, and, and of course, you know, uh, you know, jack of all trades, master of none, uh, as you, as you grow and get bigger, when you start putting down the wrenches and you start picking up the other stuff you're trying to do and grow your business. Well, of course we can do it. We fix everything. That's what technicians do. And, uh, so we try to create that kind of stuff and you don't know what you don't know. We, we go to technical training to learn how to fix cars. How many shop owners go to technical training to learn how to build a website or to do a marketing plan? We don't do that. We go, we go to a class that Danny Sanchez puts on. That, that's our marketing training. You know, they're not teaching us how the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. So I think we try and we look at it and we think we did a good job, but we didn't. Yeah, and, and Dwayne, I think you make an important point about the education, you know, and that's how how we got introduced to each other, uh, really was through that education and, and you uh, your exposure to Auto Shop Solutions by taking that class. And that's really always been uh, one of the cornerstones of our business is educating the automotive industry about marketing so that you can look at and evaluate your website and know um, what type of questions to ask and what type of, of, of partnerships that you want to have, what type of questions you have to ask a company who's going to do your website so that you don't end up with, uh, as Vic says, the hod hodgepodge websites, right? So that is, um, I like the start of this story because that is, uh, that is our favorite part to start this story is through the education and really understanding and, and you came to us uh, understanding what you needed at that point. Is, is that pretty typical of a shop owner to understand what he needs? Not always. And uh, that's why we, we do a lot of education uh, in our marketing uh, and through the sales cycle uh, to really help, uh, to help shop owners understand what they need and what they don't need. Right? Mm -hmm. that, that, there's, a, there's a lot of things out there that to understanding the right things for their business uh, and the right types of programs to meet their business goals and their marketing goals. Right. Okay. You know, it's easy to look at something and know that it looks bad, but how do you know when it looks good? You know, how do you, what, what, what makes a good website? I'll go. Yeah. I'll have one to yeah, that for, before the answers yeah. is, all right, what, it, what makes it look bad? What makes it look good? But what makes it perform? That's the one I want. I might think it looks sexy, but it sucks. <laughs> so <laughs> what makes a website perform? That's what I would want to know. And Dwayne's exactly right. And, really, and that's the approach, right? Of course you want it to, to look good, but, but the look good, look bad, that's it. A lot of that is subjective, and and there's there's some standard design rules you, one needs to follow to make them to make it look good. Uh, but the most important thing is that it performs, that it converts, that it that the website converts the visitors 
into phone calls and uh, appointments online uh, that, that makes your phone ring. Uh, and, and that also, as when Duane says, does it perform? It's, it's the marketing program. You know, a website is the entity. A website may be the anchor of your marketing, but having a web, just having a website uh, is not going to fulfill your goals. Just having a website is, um, you know, you need to drive traffic to that website and you need to find the right customer. And that's that's where we started working together with Dynamic Automotive. And, and as Dwayne said, uh, he needed to find the right customer uh, for his other two locations. So what is it that makes a website perform? Is it a coupon right there on the the homepage, 50% off? What is it that, you know, gets people to, to respond to a website? Uh, well, there's the, there's the finding it, making sure it's being found online, uh, even when they're searching, right? And making sure that it's built with the right kind of keywords. Uh, and, and then once a visitors, once the right kind of visitor has found the website, making sure that, um, that it has the right calls to actions. The calls to actions are really the most important thing. Sometimes it's coupons, but really depending on what you're looking for, if, if it's a shop looking for um, more brakes, brake service, if you're looking for oil changes, it really just depends on what you're looking for. If you're a BMW shop and looking for BMW repair, not always, coupons aren't gonna work in every instance. It's, it's having the right kind of content and making sure that the uh, the brand of the business, the feel of the business is coming through and that the business is coming across as trustworthy. So a consumer visiting you for the first time would say, I'd take my car there to get fixed. Dwayne, it seems like it might be easier to find the next great employee or understand every aspect of ADOS than to come up with the right website. <laughs> that, that's why you get a good partner uh, to, to help help you with that, you know. And, and you know, speaking to like coupons, we're not a coupon discount based shop. We're we're more for based. So they don't have the luxury of being able to throw out a fifty percent coupon. They they have to do the hard work of when someone searches for auto repair or a specific service. We're top of mind. They put us top of mind, and that's you know that's the value right there. Is is people are going to click on what comes up at the beginning and at the top. They're not going to scroll through a long list, um, so they don't get the the easy date with the the big coupon. They have to help us build our value and show it. And Margaret said that your website was an award winning website, but you've changed it. What's going on there? <laughs> Uh, we, we, it, it's changed multiple times and every time it gets better. Uh, it, it, it is, uh, our, our last version was, was an award winning ASA top 10 website, I believe two years ago. And I think the one that just came out where we got some more fine tuning, that's just it. Once it's done, it's never finished. We just keep adding to it, modifying it, making it better. Um, but it's launched. You know, like anything, you got to launch it to find out, you know, where you need to make improvements. But it's it's never a, fi a finished piece. And it gets better all the time. And, and I can tell this by the traffic to it and the information, uh, the scheduling appointments, you know, how they track the phone calls. I, I know where my customers are coming from because they're helping me with that information. And I know that, you know, my, the website to this day is our number one generator for uh, clientele. You know, and of course, we have a lot of things going around it. The website's the core, and there's pieces all around it. And in the end, it, it funnels through, and, and I see results. And I've had friends, you know, I have many friends that use Auto Shop Solutions. Um, and we all will say, you know, what is the one thing Auto Shop Solutions does for you? It makes the phone ring, no matter what. And you know what? That's what I need. From there, we'll take it from there. We, we will do our part uh, to get them in, to convert that, to get the sale, and to fix the car. So with the phone ringing, do you have a process in place? 
course, I already know the answer to this is because it's, it's, it's as successful as Dwayne is. You have a process in place. What does that process look like? And what can a shop owner do once the phone begins to ring to get that customer to come in? Well, of course, you have you have your normal, uh, you know, your greeting and all, letting them know who they're talking to and stuff like that, and finding out what they need. But you break down any barriers also, you know, if it could be cost, whatever it is, you, you get the car there. That's the most important thing. And then you find a way to help the customer out. Um, but if you give a customer a chance, um, you know, where they're not sure, you know, you make them feel welcome and comfortable, but you get them in. And as soon as you get them in, usually the, the higher the completion ratio is and the higher the uh, you're able to get, get the sale up. So a website is one great element of a marketing campaign, but it can't be the only one, right? What are the other uh, components that support the website? So, right, as, as I mentioned, you know, we look at it as the, uh, the website is the anchor, but um, in, in Dwayne's case, right, um, when we started working together, he had uh, three locations, and now he's at five locations, right? So, so we were on that uh, growth path and journey with him through, through these years. So it takes uh, many components to drive the right kind of customers um, to support that growth, that growth path that he was on. Uh, one, of the made, one of the cornerstones is uh, paid search campaigns. And in using paid search to target uh, your ideal customer using the keyword, um, and then the paid search is also extremely uh, beneficial when you're expanding into these new locations because the paid search campaigns, uh, you can target with the keywords that you that you want to go after, and then you target that campaign geographically. And that really hones in and, and ensures that you're getting the customers that are looking for the services that you're offering in that five, eight mile radius around your shop. Uh, and that's what converts the highest uh, highest level of phone calls. That's not the only thing you can do. That's just one of the strategies that you have to make sure that you're using uh, with pay, with an online marketing strategy. Yeah, well, I wanna, I wanna talk about why that's so important is even though the five stores are in one county, the demographics around each store is completely different. Um, some of them we only need to market two miles because um, the density is so great. And there's other ones we got to go 10 to 15 miles. And, and then what the keywords are and what customers are looking for are different. And they basically, they look at the area, Autosoft Solutions looks at the demographics of the people that are living in that area around that shop or potential shop. And they come up with a plan. They come up with the keywords and, and they say, this is your best bet for interaction with the right type of customer. That's why it's so important. You say, oh, well, Dwayne, your five stores are in one county. You know, it should be one one and done. It, it shouldn't matter. No, it really does. Each one is totally different. And they treat them that way, which is great. So we can customize it to make it work for the demographics of that shop. Right, and the search volume is different in each of those areas too. So that's how we target those campaigns too. We know what, what types of keywords are being searched in each of those different markets. I'm sorry, I was going to say, I am, of course, a search engine expert. But for those of us who may not be as familiar with, uh, with search engines and, and, and search terms, how do you use one website to reach five different demographics? Yeah, that's actually a, a really good question. So we, well, we, I can tell you a little bit more about the paid search, but first I want to uh, also visit the, you know, the search engine optimization side and uh, making sure that it's clear that you have to also have um, each of those locations have to have their own, let's say their own presence within this website. So we do this a couple different ways uh, by building a website with uh, landing pages and whole sections of the website dedicated to that location, right? So that's one way we signal to uh, user search, someone who's searching online. We also signal to the search engines, look, this is an entity, this is part of a bigger 
um, is part of a, a bigger site, but this specific area is, of the website is got, has content targeted for this location. There's a uh, address there. There's a geographic marker for that. Um, but in conjunction with that, it's claiming the local uh, Google My Business listing for each of those physical locations. So for all five of those locations. So Dynamic Automotive is one business, but uh, there are physically five locations and you need to, to be represented as five locations online as well. So claiming the Google My Business and then also doing the ongoing SEO with the name, address, and phone number services. It's ongoing monthly services that uh, we are all constantly telling the internet uh, the exact information about each of these locations so that the, so that the uh, aggregators will find them and, and uh, index them properly online. It's, it's, there's, a, there's a lot to it. There's quite a complexity to the back side of it when you're trying to do these multi-locations properly. And that's why it's challenging for a shop owner to try to do this on their own. And, yes. and Dwayne, and, I can imagine you trying to do all of this yourself and, and manage those locations. So, I, I tell you, uh, you can't, and you can't not not do it right because I've seen the progression, you know, over the last six seven years where we did it this way for a while, and now Google mm -hmm. changed its mind and we're doing it this way, and now we do it this way, and then all of a sudden we're doing it that way, and I'm just like, yeah. I, I had no idea. So what was working? would no longer be working if I did it, if I was lucky enough to get it right the first time. Mm -hmm. and, and what they do for us is, and I don't have to call and ask them and say, I heard about this. They're like, hey, this is coming down the road, or this might be coming down the road. You know, they're really good about keeping us up to date. And they try to educate us. And that's the biggest thing is if I have an idea or a thought, and I, I'm like, you know, what do you think about this? And they'll say, eh, no, and, and explain it. Uh, like, this is why it's a good idea. This is why it's not a good idea. So, yeah, keeping up with, with tech, I mean, I, you know, look at today's cars. It used to be every, what, eight, ten years, you know, in the industry uh, um, overcame itself in technology. Now it's almost every year. I don't have to say it's got to be the same with, with IT and, and with uh, Google and, and online marketing. It has to be changing every year now compared to what it did five years ago. So you can't yeah. just create a great website and sit back and go, ah, my work's done here. I'm good. Nope. Nope. We launched our uh, the latest version about a month ago, and I have a couple pages that I – I got to find some time to put some effort into. And I think that's really important. You know, they're going to say, Dwayne, how do you have such a great website? And yes, you can uh, call Margaret and they'll build you a website. But to be a great website, you have to be involved. You have to give them content. They can tell them the heck of a story. But if you, if they have nothing to say because you haven't given them anything or worse yet, you haven't done anything. You know, and, and as far as community, you know, you want to be a community based shop. I hope you have some things to give them to show that you are a community based shop, not just those words. Um, that to me is what really makes you want an award winning website. Give them a story to write. And, and that's yeah. by far that's the partnership. You know, it, yeah. you can't just write a check and say, build it. No, you have to be a part of it. It's the partnership, right? Because when we know more about what you're trying to achieve, and what Dwayne's trying to achieve, we can do our job better, right? That's how that works. And as Dwayne says, when he gives us more, we take it to the next level uh, and, and, and build on it. And that's the real partnership. And that's where, uh, that's the foundation for our long-term customers. They're our long-term partners. And it's, a, it's really a business partnership. So Margaret, do you have any like uh, discovery documentation that you'd utilize when you inter interview a shop to kind of yeah, take that's down a great and find question. out who they are? Yeah, we do. Uh, it's a uh, two-step process, actually. Uh, we do a survey. So it, we have a whole onboarding uh, process that we go through. And there's a survey, and then we there's a phone call follow-up to go over the results of the survey. We do. We ask all those important types of questions um, you know, we ask the history of the business. Uh, we 
we get uh, a feel for their top services. We, we, there's a laundry list of questions, right? That we go through mm -hmm. soup to nuts on really trying to get to know the shop, the way they do business, uh, their marketing goals, uh, and, and, and build on all that, the services that they're liking, that they want to target a little bit more about their area, their customers, all of those things. We, we take all of that into consideration uh, because we write custom content for these websites. Uh, and as Dwayne was saying, you know, as much as you can give us, we're able to write even a better story. But uh, all of our all of our websites are 100 uh, percent custom content. You mentioned that, that custom content part. So, if shop owners across the country are using your services to create their websites, you're not necessarily going to see the same site in Frederick County, Maryland, and Fargo, North Dakota and uh, Santa Clara, California, just because you've created a template and boom, we're gonna populate the same thing with, with you know, the, the sites are gonna look identical. It's all gonna, right, they're all gonna have their own unique content. Even, even if the layout was similar on some of them, they're not gonna look the same because, uh, because you have your, the logo, you match the colors and it is custom content. Yeah. And are there certain elements that you might say, oh, that looks similar to another website? Well, keep in mind, there's there's uh, expected navigation and, and best practices, right? Because we talked about at the beginning of the conversation about websites that work and convert. And so there's a few things that we know that convert very well. So you might see a few of these elements uh, on different websites. But what's unique is that it looks it, it takes the feel of the shop, the, the branding color of the shop, the logo, and, and all the custom content. And, you know, your marketing messages. Your marketing messages across the country from, vary from shop to shop. All that's unique to your shop. Can we can we talk about three or four of the, the common things that work for a website? Regardless of design, what should a successful website encompass? Okay, you need to have a phone number on the top of your website, <laughs> right? You need to have the phone number on your home page. <laughs> or if you have locations, right? You have to have the, 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 the contact information. Contact information. You don't know how many websites we see that don't have the contact information. You want them to call you, you want them to schedule online, right? So these strong calls to action. And then uh, imagery, right? Imagery, making, making, uh, Preferably is when when a shop provides their own images, provides pictures. Like Dwayne said, you want a great website, well, give us some of your pictures to work with, right? Instead of uh, instead of stock photography, we can only we can only use what you give us. So, you know, picture of the shop, uh, the calls to action, the phone number, and and the marketing messages. Right. Tell them about your shop. Being able to, within that eight seconds, have someone visiting your website, invoke that emotion of, I trust this place. I would take my car here to get fixed. You got about eight seconds to make that happen wow. on that homepage. Not a lot of time. Not a lot of time. Yeah, you, know, this yeah, you gotta get a lot done. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Auto Shop Solutions, the automotive marketing agency. You know how to fix cars in your shop. Auto Shop Solutions knows how to get them there. Auto Shop Solutions award-winning websites and automotive marketing services drive automotive businesses forward. From search engine optimization and social media to targeted paid search campaigns, Auto Shop Solutions know how to get auto shops more business. Visit autoshopsolutions.com slash podcast to learn more. Mention this podcast and receive 50% off your setup fee. So, Dwayne, speaking of websites, give us your website so that, so that uh, our listeners can, can visit and find out you know, what a successful site looks like. Sure. It's www.dynamicautomotive.net. And to tag into what we were talking about earlier a little bit, you know, talking about the websites and, and, and getting one that's you, that's important. You know, you, you want a website that is, that is you, you know, you're giving them content to help them build that. 
they have a great survey they go through where, where they, they actually start to break down and it's pretty lengthy, but it, it lets them know the type of website that is you so they can build it for you because there's so many directions they can go in. Just the, the, the whole theme of the thing. Um, and we wanted our, our website now is, is more of a newer style, modern. Uh, our old website, I don't want to call it old because it actually still performed very well, but it, it was a traditional. So that was an example they had was our old website for tra a traditional website. So they give you examples. They really walk you through it. It takes some work, but the end result is not just a great website, but it's a, it's a website that is that you can look at and say, that's us. That, that's who we are. So it's telling your story much deeper. And I think that's what helps catch that person in that eight seconds when they look at it. They go, oh, wow, they're, they're a community partner. I want to be with them. That's who I want to go to. And I, when you look at our website, I think that's what you see. So, Dwayne, the story is about what you can do for the customer, about what kind of products you sell. Tell me, what do you think the story really should be? The, the story that our, our website tells, I think it needs to tell our story because we have to sell ourselves in that eight seconds. Um, it, you know, let's face it, we're not the most trusted industry, but I think we're getting better. Um, you know, one website at a time, we're getting better as an industry. Uh, you know, we, we, we have to do a, a better job. And I think we need to give examples. Like, like I said, if you say you're a community based shop, you need to show things where we have a community tab, you click on it, and you can see things that we've done. And that's brought us a lot of business because people say you help, you know, the little league teams, the the local United Way, you, you do things like that, you're, you're there for them. And we tell people, we're successful because we help our communities be successful. And then in turn, they help us. Um, so I, I think you have to be able to tell that story. Um, yes, they want to know the services you provide. It is important because as much as you think, well, they know that we fix everything. No, they don't. We still get the question, do you change tires? Do you change oil? Yeah, we do all those things. You know, do you work on foreign cars? Yeah, of course we do. So it is important it's there, but I really believe the most important thing is, is giving a story of yourself and who you are and what you're about and, and who you're there to help. So it's probably uh, inconceivable that there are shops out there that don't have websites right now, but I'm guessing there are some. Mm -hmm. There are. There are more than you think. Yeah. There are a lot of Facebook websites. <clears throat> I've run across a lot of shops that have them. Well, and, the and something else you got to look Something else to think about too is, I, you know, our latest acquisition, you know, a shop of 52 years, they never claimed their Google My Business page. They never claimed their Yelp page. The stuff was just hanging out there in the open because they didn't know any better. Um, you know, and that's something that Auto Shop has done as we've grown is they gave me a list of things. You know, I, I bought the business assets. Can you tell me as a shop owner? you know what all your business assets are and what the online assets and the value they are you know i have a decent idea because i've done this a few times but i still they still scold me you know i i, I got a, a nice letter you know Jen, jennifer i hadn't got to talk to her in a while and she sent me a nice letter if you did this do this this and this if you did that do this this and this you know how much that helped me especially when i had a million things going on trying to make this deal and as vic said you know they, they fall apart are much easier than they stay together when you're trying to do an acquisition. And uh, they made sure I dotted my I's, crossed my T's, and we we retain those assets, which is very important because it's easy to lose them if you don't go after them before the deal is done. And let's yeah. talk about those assets. What uh, what should shops be doing? Okay, you've got your you've created a website. Whether it's a great website or not, you've you've done a website. That's not obviously the end of the game, but what else should you be doing? How, you know, how do you go about getting those, uh, the Google My Business and the Yelp pages? How do you how do you do that? Well, you you go on and of course you, you you claim them. That's one of the most important things you do right away is is you claim those pages, and then of course uh, those reviews are, you know, that's an asset. You know, if it, if it's, if they've had a successful business, 
that means something. I know currently our customers tell us we have great reviews. That's why we gave you a chance. You know, that's why we got a chance because we had great reviews. That's not why they were going to buy anything. That's why they gave us a chance. So if they're out there, you know, you, you need, of course, if they're yours already, you, you need to, to maintain that and, and grow that, you know, through just even asking for a review. But if it's in an acquisition and they're good, you want to make sure that, that you gain access to it. You get the login information, so you get the credentials. It's the same with the URL. You know, if, if someone types in that old website from that old business and we have a forward on it now because we, we own that URL, we got we got control of that with the help of Auto Shop Solutions. So they type in that that old business name. It now goes to our new website and that location page. As Margaret said, each store has its own location page, directs them right there. So I'm now retaining the customers that he's had for years with zero marketing. You know, they're at least I'm getting an opportunity. And that's all we really can get is opportunities. And we're getting that. It's the same as a phone call. It's an opportunity to, to get them in the door. Dwayne, 2020. January. Wonderful year. Yeah, wonderful year. <laughs> one, of, one of our favorite years. We all want to repeat that. No. So you, you expanded from two to eight bays at the Newmark lo location. So tell me how you kept the marketing going and bays full. Either <clears throat> you guys could take this. I'll start it off in, in the, you know, 2020, we thought was going to be a, a great year for us. Um, it had it, 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 it turned all right, but it, it, it was a roller coaster for sure. But, uh, you know, something we were really excited about is our original store. We opened in 1995. It was a two-bay store that was past capacity. You know, 1.2 million out of two bays. That's a lot to do. And we knew in the community was adding – 5,000 houses. So we knew we had to do something or someone else would come into the area. So we actually bought property across the street and it took us two years and we built an eight bay facility and we opened it in January of 2020, you know, right, right when, you know, you started hearing things of what was going to happen and all, but you really, you didn't know. And of course you didn't believe it. Um, and of course we, amped up our marketing, getting ready to open. And, and we opened, started off great. And then of course in March when everything locked down, um, everyone struggled, you know, we, we uh, made some hard choices. We, we changed ourselves as far as made ourselves better as a company working on our own procedures and processes and, and learning how to be a better company. But the thing we did not stop, we, we changed it, we didn't stop was our marketing. Um, and I, th I think of Henry Ford, you know, saying when, you know, when, when money's tight, cut marketing is the worst thing you can ever do. We didn't, uh, if anything, we added to our marketing. We changed our message a little bit. So we were relevant with the times. Um, and uh, that new store actually carried us. You know, I got told, you know, you're opening up a couple million dollar new store. What a terrible time to do it. Actually, it gave us the cash flow, um, you know, that we that extra capacity it just, it brought in money and you know, business, it's not always, you know, P&L can show you have a lot of money, but there's no money in the bank. Cash flow is, is what makes us go. And it brought in cash flow. And the one thing we didn't do in the, some of the top shops in the country that, that I deal with and know personally, we did not stop our marketing. Um, other ones that did, I know some struggled, you know, especially they were slower to recover. I think we recovered much faster because we didn't stop that. Um, we cut other things. Marketing was not one of them, and I think it really benefited us and it helped us. It helped that roller coaster when it went back up. It went up a little higher because we we didn't give up on on our choices and our partner. You know, we we didn't give up on them, and I know they didn't give up on us. Uh, the most successful shops uh, we worked with kept their marketing going. As Dwayne mentioned, yes, changed some of the messaging but never stopped uh, because, uh, and even though some of the search volume was, was down, um, you know, people weren't driving as much, but there were still people getting in need of getting their car, cars fixed. There's a reason why auto repair is essential and remained essential because people still needed to get their cars fixed. And so while some did stop marketing, um, those who didn't, there was less 
there was less noise out there and they were the ones to come to the top. And so they got the business. The ones who continue to market got the business. And uh, another one of the important points that Dwayne mentioned, which we saw not only with his business, but with many businesses across the country, uh, the bounce back. Those who continue to market throughout the entire time recovered much, much quicker back to normal numbers than the ones that stopped. We, we had some that stopped and their call volume went down to almost nothing and they turned their marketing back on and they, they had volume again, right? It was a, it was a very eye-opening experiment um, or should I say experience for us to see, but it was an experiment, I think, for the shop uh, when we saw this happen. So we have lots of data to show uh, the success of that steady and uh, non-wavering and keep it moving forward. and. And, and Dwayne is a perfect example of that. Just kept it going. And that new market location did fantastic. Margaret, what role does social media play in a uh, successful marketing campaign? Yeah, it, uh, it is one of the pillars. You know, we talk about this omni-channel approach because with the, the website being the anchor, it's not the only component. We've talked about paid search. We've talked about search engine optimization. Um, and then another pillar is that social media. It's being ever present. Uh, it helps in being ever present uh, because uh, the social media page, what, Facebook, Instagram, whichever social media platform a shop is using, it's a fantastic way for a consumer to get to know of the shop to get to know a little bit more about the business, right? You can follow them, but also to see their posts. You have information on your website and the information tells about the business and it tells about your history, uh, but that social media feed will also tell a little bit more about the personality of the business, especially if a shop contributes to their social media. And I cannot emphasize that enough uh, because something that we do is we also do posts for, for the shops and the the best feeds are when there's a collaboration that the shop also makes posts uh, for for their shop in, in in addition to the things that we're doing as well because uh, it's a it's a fantastic way for consumers to connect and get to know you and to differentiate you from the shop down the street through through what's going on at the shop interesting things that are happening at the shop that are different than than auto repair topics right uh and that's what people like to see the human side of your business i would encourage our audience you know just like we want the right customer you know look for the right partner and and marketing is definitely a challenge for most shop owners i know a few that are pretty good at it but our bandwidth and our time uh, is important to us and, and it's hard to grow a company when you're doing all the work you can't lead you know by jose always told me get out of the engine room and get up in the wheelhouse so you can lead you, uh, you know and jose is my business partner uh, for those that don't know but uh you know and by going with a partner because it's a critical you know part of business and marketing go with someone that has a proven track record and they also are very personal, just like we are small business owners. You know, we like to talk to our customers and get to know them. It's the same, you know, with the team at Auto Shop Solutions. I know most of them are there. I've known them for years and I have great conversations with them. So, you know, it's a relationship I enjoy and I encourage you, you know, as a business owner to find that partner, you know, like Auto Shop Solutions, because, you know, business will improve and the enjoyment in business will as well. Excellent. Margaret. Thank you. Yeah, and I would agree with, with Dwayne, really the partnership. Uh, when we work with uh, our customers, we don't think of them as customers, we do think of them as partners because we're together helping grow the business, meet the marketing goals. And that's what brings us the most fulfillment is when we can know more about a shop's uh, goals and what they're trying to accomplish and getting to know them, their pers you know, their personal lives, their families as well, and, and really go through this journey together. And that's really a testament for, 
for a lot of the long-term customers that we have, um, and like Dwayne, and our ability to uh, work with them and find a partner that that helps you grow over time, helps you change with the with the way that the internet is changing over time, uh, and and someone you can partner with in the long haul. Cool. Well, let's kill like down a few. Uh takeaways from this for our audience. First, you don't need to be an expert at marketing. You need to bring the right people around you. Your website and all your marketing needs to have a strong call to action. But the website's at its core. It's designed to get the phone to ring, but then your job is to get the appointment. Paid search is crucial, whether a keyword or geographically. SEO, SEO uniformity is critical. Name, address, phone number is highly important that it's uniform across all. When you're working with your partner, provide as much detail about your business as possible to help them craft your marketing message. Be prepared to give as much input as possible. Have your phone number on your website. <laughs> you want to tell a story. And lastly, claim your Google My Business, Yelp, and URL. These things all seem pretty simple, but they're not done as often as they should be, obviously. You don't have to do it alone. You just need to do it. I'd like to thank our guest today, Dwayne Myers from Dynamic Automotive in Frederick County, Maryland, and Margaret Polango from Auto Shop Solutions. Auto Shop Solutions is the automotive marketing agency. You know how to fix cars in the shop. Auto Shop Solutions knows how to get them there. Auto Shop Solutions award-winning websites and automotive marketing services drive automotive businesses forward from search engine optimization and social media to targeted paid search campaigns. Auto Shop Solutions knows how to get auto shops more business. Visit autoshopsolutions.com slash podcast to learn more. Mention this podcast and receive 50% off your setup fee. Once again, Dwayne, Margaret, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you guys. It's our on pleasure. Behalf of, on, behalf of my, on behalf of my co-host, Vic Trasic, I'd like to thank you for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you again soon.